Well, I do want to introduce Janelyn to you. Janelyn is the executive director. That would be your official title. Um, probably bus driver was this morning. Um, but uh, Janelyn was part of our summer church, citywide church meeting down in the park. And uh, she's going to come and share a few words and then invite whoever up. So I'm just going to move this over. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having us here this morning. We are always so blessed and honored when uh, pastors reach out to us like Pastor Clark did and ask us to come and share. Um, we just wanna come and share with you the testimonies that uh, of God's goodness just to build your faith as well. And so as you know what we're doing, um, it just gives you that faith that God is still moving. He's still working, um, even when it seems almost impossible. Uh, as Pastor Clark mentioned, I was a part of the uh, church group in the park in the summertime, and so I actually announced there that we had brought an office right here to Penticton. And so that is still going. We meet, um, I meet with people at the Granada Inn. So we are at the Granada Inn down on Skaha Lake Road. And so we have an office there in one of the uh, hotel rooms. So the lady who owns that hotel room has uh, uh, let us use one of their rooms. And so we have it open. My goal is to have it open every day of the week. Right now, that's not happening. I do need some volunteers and people to help me. Uh, but we try to have it open two days a week, sometimes three. Uh, so that that's kind of our goal is to have it opened every day of the week. So we're getting there. But uh, but yeah, if anybody wants to help with that, you're welcome to see me uh, after and uh, we can chat. So I am going to share a message. But at, but first, I'm going to call on uh, Taylor to come and share just a short testimony of what God is doing in his life. To God be the glory, for sure. Um, yeah, my name's Taylor Faduk. Um, I've been in Adult and Teen Challenge Okanagan Men's Center for about three months now. It's actually my second time there. I was there in 2018, uh, and I left uh, due to health uh, difficulties that I was having. And I went on another journey with the Lord, just walking me through a bunch of stuff. And then recently, uh, coming back, I had got it in my heart again, um, just due to some stuff that I was going through in the place that I was at. Like, I didn't know what to do with myself. Uh, I was becoming suicidal. I had been in the psych ward. Um, I haven't used, I hadn't used like any hard drugs for a while. Uh, I was using cannabis a little bit, but I'd gone off that because it was putting me into psychosis and just wasn't, wasn't good. I was deceived. You know, I thought it was fine, um, but again, it, I just started to see the filthiness of it and how it was affecting me, and having a sober mind, like, you can't be putting those things into your body and expect to still have a right mind and heart with the Lord. Uh, so I, again, just got to this point where I didn't know what to do with myself. I was in my room, uh, just dreading waking up every day. Um, like pretty depressed, I could just start to see, you know, reasons to run away or, or just not want to be here anymore. Um, and that's when I started to think about Adult and Teen Challenge again. And I, I, I thought about going to Pritis. Uh, they have a location just outside Calgary. Um, and I kind of started that process. And then I thought about Jason Legg uh, from the Okanagan Men's Center. And I reached out to him. And it was literally in the same day that I had spoke with him, he's like, let's get you out here. And I had booked a flight for like $141 to fly from Edmonton to Vancouver and from Vancouver to Kelowna. Uh, they picked me up and I've been at the center ever since. Um, it's definitely like a battle being there. I mean, like it, it's an awesome place, but the spiritual warfare the things that we come out of, I mean, you really get to see 
um, the difference between the darkness and the light and, and the real fight that we're in. It's a fight of faith, and we have the victory, um, but still, it's a daily uh, battle, even just with all the guys there, you know, living in harmony with one another and loving one another and uh, just, yeah, the things like having to wake up and be on, on a structured schedule every day, even sometimes you might not want to get out of bed, but like when you do and you press through, um, it's worth it in the end, right? Because it's like Peter said, like, Lord, where, will, where else would I go? Like, I don't, other treatment centers, they don't, they don't have the, the fullness of the gospel like we do, being immersed in the word. Everything we do, we start with Bible devotions in the morning, all our, the, the curriculums all through the Bible. Like, you just, this program's been running for like almost 70 years, probably, something like that. Like, it's, it's a long-established thing, and, and God has ordained this ministry. Um, and I believe, yeah, it's going to keep going and growing, and I'm just blessed to be a part of it. And one of the verses that God put in my heart coming back to the center uh, is, He that began a good work in you shall complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And he's faithful to do that. Even when I was screwing up or I didn't think he was there, he was absolutely there directing my steps. And for whatever reason, the things that we have to go through in the darkness, it's worth it when you step into the light and you can share that with others and encourage others and just break strongholds and do all the things that we can do in the name of Jesus. And uh, yeah, I still believe in the power of God, even though I struggle uh, with health problems still. God is my provider. I have a medication that helps. So even though I don't want to be on it, I've tried to go off it twice. Um, but anyhow, God, he's faithful in every circumstance. He provides doctors, nurses, health care, addiction services. Like, we're, we're not left without any resources. God is our father, and he looks after us. So thank you. I love you, and have a good day. Thank you, Taylor. I'm going to call on Mark to come on up. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mark. Um, I originally came into the program at Teen Challenge uh, in 2017 and I graduated in 2019. Um, and then through life and all of its fun shenanigans, uh, here I am again, back here for a six month refresher, which I'm about halfway through. Um, back in 2017, this was the book that I brought with me and it's got a lot of a lot of everything in here actually of things that I learned and stuff but one scripture I really liked was uh, from Psalm 139 uh, search me O God and know my heart test me and know my anxious thoughts point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life um, yeah so what brought me to Teen Challenge originally was uh, an alcohol problem um, I would pretty much drink to cope with life and uh, at first it started off as kind of like a casual thing fun on weekends whatever and then it turned into uh, self-medicating due to like anger bitterness and just a broken heart um, life wasn't really going in my favor and everything kind of came to a crashing halt so I came to Teen Challenge 2017 and everything was good after I graduated for quite a while um, and then eventually I started slipping. COVID didn't help. Getting laid off work didn't help. Living by myself didn't help. Although they're not excuses, those are just things that helped contribute to me slipping and sliding down a slippery slope again. Um, so I'm happy to be here. I'm learning lots. There's something I wanted to read in here, but I can't seem to find it. Um, but it's about vision and having vision. Um, here it is. <clears throat> I don't know where I wrote this from, but some of it is my words, uh, probably most of it isn't, but it's really good. So life is a journey, and every journey has a destination. Everybody ends up somewhere in life. A few people end up somewhere on purpose. Vision is what makes the difference in where you end up. Leaders are meant to be out front. They take followers to places they would not tend to go on their own. They see further than others see, and they see before others see it. 
What is God's purpose for your life? Where is it that God wants to use you? When you know the answers to these questions, vision for the future gets easier to determine. God has a vision for your life. Why would you want to think up <clears throat> and do your own thing? What could be more fulfilling than the plan that God has for you? Someone said, there is no success in the comfort zone, and there is no comfort in the success zone. So if you think about it, you have to get out of your comfort zone to succeed, but it won't be very comfortable in the process. You have to work a vision, put one foot in front of the other, taking one step at a time, drawing you closer and closer to accomplishing what you set out to accomplish. And that's my goal and my vision for being back in the program. I don't want to selfishly choose or think that, you know, going back to my old job or doing this or doing that is comfortable. I want to do what God wants me to do. And I believe that he brought me back here for a reason. Um, you know, it's, the day I was sitting in my car and didn't have a clue what to do or where to go or even anywhere to live, I had moved to Kelowna. I didn't have any plans on coming back to Adult and Teen Challenge. And uh, God knew he had to pretty much take everything away from me to get me to come back. And uh, literally, I phoned, I phoned, my best friend phoned me, who I hadn't talked to in a couple months. And based on the conversation him and I had, he was like, you know what you have to do, right? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, what's that? I'm like, you know. He's like, I want you to say it. And I'm like, I have to call Jason and go back to Okanagan Men's Center. And so I phoned Jason, and like, without a doubt, 15 minutes later, he was there to pick me up. And, uh, you know, miraculously, I had all my belongings in, in suitcases in my car. So it was just like God had it totally set up. And so, yeah, here I am. I'm doing well. And uh, I actually have purpose in my life again, because without God, life is nothing. It's worthless. So, yeah, thanks for listening. Have a good day. This is, uh, yeah, these testimonies, this is why we do what we do at Adult and Teen Challenge. We are a tool that God uses um, here and now to help people, and we're just so fortunate and thankful that we have the space when people call in desperate need, and we're able to help people who want help. Um, we do have people, we have guys that come in, they go, they come, they go. Uh, they're not quite at the rock bottom place that Mark was talking about. And so um, sometimes that can be disheartening when guys come and guys go, but um, it is hard. And to see that vision, like Mark was talking about, of a better life, a different way of doing things, it's just amazing to see. Um, as the guys walk that out and uh, doing things differently to get a different result through Jesus. And so I just wanted to share um, with you a message that has been shared with me, and it is the power of salvation. It's the power of the gospel. Um, this message is extremely good news, like amazing news. Um, and so we're going to go over that good news. But in order to know what the good news is, you kind of have to know what the bad news is first. And so um, I'm going to go over a little bit the good news second, but the bad news first. And so I just ask that you would stick with me, even if it's a little bit uncomfortable. Um, and we are going to get to the good news, and I am going to just pray uh, just so that the Lord can be with me and, uh, and help me through this. So, Lord, we just, we love you and we thank you, and Jesus, I just call on you to speak through me. Father, you know this message, you know um, it's your good news, and so, Lord, we just ask that as um, ears would hear it, that they would be opened to the news of the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. So there is no greater given to us than the glory of God revealed in his gospel. There is no more important message than the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
uh, Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it, it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first the Jew, then the Gentile. The gospel concerning Jesus Christ is the power of God for salvation. Anyone who puts their faith in Christ will be made right in God's sight. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled with God. This is my plea with presenting the gospel that people will be reconciled to God, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. At the core of everything, this is the fundamental spiritual problem it's sin, Satan, and death being separate from God. So today I'm going to share the gospel. And if you are already saved, this is just a reminder for all of us about the good news, about what God has done for us. And if you have not yet put your faith in Jesus Christ, I would plea with you to turn from your sin and believe in Jesus. When God is with man, he has life and true joy. People need to be with God. Today, we will be looking at the way to meet God. In John 14, 6, it says, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Through Jesus Christ is the only way to receive true life. A fish cannot leave the water. Immediately, problems will come, and it will die after going through suffering. Trees, they need to put roots in the ground to live. If a tree is pulled out of the ground, suffering will come and it will wither. Why is that? God made them this way. It is the principle of creation. In the same way, man can only have genuine, lasting joy and true life when they are together with God. And that is how God made us. Genesis 1:27 says, "So God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. They were created as spiritual beings, they were special. They were created different than the animals, and they had the greatest blessing to be with, together with God." Psalm 8:4 says, "What is mankind that you are mindful of them?" human beings, that you care for them. Mankind is so special to God. It says he thinks about them continually. Then how come today so many people are suffering from unhappiness and problems? You don't have to look very far to find all kinds of people who are suffering emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. Mankind left God. Mankind has to be with God, but left him. We will see this in Gen Genesis 3 as to why mankind left God. In the garden, there was a serpent, Satan. He deceived Eve, which led to mankind being separate from God. God, who is the word, gave the word he wanted obedience. Genesis 2.17 but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. We have seen that to be together with God is to have life, and to be separate from God is to have death. This means for now and eternity both. So being deceived by the serpent, they ate from the tree that God had forbidden. God is holy, and he cannot be with a sinner. So God's Holy Spirit left the sinful man. Isaiah 59.2 says, But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he does not hear. As a result of sin, of unbelief, man is separated from God, and all problems come to mankind. Although virtually all people like to think of themselves as basically good, the testimony of God's word is the opposite. For example, the Bible says 
that all mankind apart from God are corrupt, totally depraved by nature, and their eternal consequences for these things. The scriptures say before and after the flood that our hearts are evil. This is the accurate state of people according to God. And I share these things so that we know what the Bible says we need to be saved from. We naturally feel guilty about these things. Shame goes hand in hand with living in darkness apart from God. The world cannot eliminate shame by normalizing sin. We need to be free from, free from the weight of our guilt and denying our sinfulness and labeling it under the unlimited number of names the world has come up with. We don't want to face these things because we are comfortable in them. But this is not the answer to the problem that goes deep into our soul. It's a spiritual problem. I'm sure if you've heard the saying that God requires per, uh, perfection, not progress. So he provided a substitute, not goals. I'm just going to say that again. God requires perfection, not progress. So he provided a substitute, not goals. The power of mankind cannot solve the problem of sin and Satan. It cannot take away the emptiness or darkness. We try our whole lives to solve our own problems, every way we can think of, and are left just as empty as when we started. We need to be redeemed. Jesus is the anointed one of God who was set apart to save us, the one who solved the problem on the cross. He's the only answer. Jesus, is, who is God, needed to come to earth to solve this problem. The problem is one, separation from God. And the solution is one. God promised the Christ to solve this problem through Jesus. Jesus is that Christ. Through the cross and resurrection, he did everything we need. On the cross, the one declared holy, holy, holy was made to be sin on our behalf. On the cross, he did not become sinful, but rather our sins were imputed on him. While he bore our sins, he remained that spotless lamb of God. Mark 10, 45 says, for even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve, to give his life as a ransom for many. On the cross, he solved the problem of sin perfectly with shedding his righteous blood and giving his life in our place. Sin is so awful that it requires the most extreme penalty, which is death. God provided a perfect and complete payment for sin. Through the willing sacrifice of his son, Jesus, he was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless, perfect life. The blood he shed on the cross was for all mankind. Our debt was paid once and for all. He took the wrath of God that we deserved, and because of that, we can be healed spiritually, forgiven, and justified. We are cleansed and made spiritually alive. Jesus is God, came to save the lost. He was reconciled us, he reconciled us back to God. Peace peace between us and God was made once and for all. 2 Corinthians 5.21, for our sake, he made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. This verse may be the most concise presentation of the gospel in all the scriptures. God acted for our sake. That means God acted out of his love to make it possible to remove separation between us and him, our sin. To accomplish this, God made Christ, who had never sinned during his life on earth in any way to become our sin. Jesus' death then paid the price for sin, removing all of our guilt, removing any obstacle between us and God. Instead of being sin ourselves, those who come to God through faith in Christ are given the credit for Christ's righteousness. That sinless life is ours. 
we become God's righteousness and are reconciled in our relationship to him. Jesus tore his flesh open to provide a way to meet God. That way that Jesus opened on the cross is eternal, the new and living way. 1 John 3, 8 says, The one who does what is sinful is of the devil because, he is, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's works. Through the resurrection, he destroyed the works of the devil who was holding on to the authority of death. It says in Colossians 2.15, And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over the cross. His resurrection assured us that our future is safe and secure. Without Christ's resurrection, we would have no salvation from sin and no hope for our own future resurrection. The empty tomb is proof that Jesus is God. It guarantees the future resurrection of believers. Jesus is the promised Messiah, the true and perfect king, priest, and prophet who saved and resolved the fundamental problem of mankind perfectly. The moment we believe in him and repent of our sins, as Acts 13, 19 says, repent then and turn to God so that your sin may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. We will not be judged and we will cross over from death to life. Death is not a problem anymore. We will no longer be slaves of sin. We will be able to overcome all the suffering, the tribulations, the persecution of now, because they are not even comparable to what glory will come. By him, a payment for sin was made, and then it is by believing in him we can be made holy and righteousness before God. It is by believing in him that we are redeemed. It is by believing in him, true joy can be restored. It is by believing in him that will free us from sin and the power of Satan. And it is by believing in him that we will pass from darkness into light. And by believing in him that we will be saved and then we'll have eternal life together with God. Only the Christ could do this. Believe that he did everything that we needed. Habakkuk 3, 17 and 18 says, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there is no grapes on the vine, though the olive crops fail, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in my God, my Savior. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for this message of salvation. Lord, I'm thankful that I, that you used me today to uh, proclaim it. And so God, I just pray that if anybody either here or watching online has made a first time decision to follow you, that they would get in contact with somebody this church, um, in person. Lord, we just pray for each person that their ears would be opened to the message, that their unbelief would turn to belief, that their darkness would turn to light, and that those times of refreshing would come because they are amazing, those times of refreshing. Lord, we're just so thankful for your gospel message. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you for having us here today, and uh, I hope we didn't go too long, but <laughs> bless you.